Can you have a career today by only doing stand-up comedy? Yeah. In most cases, no. I'm gonna go with no. Sorry. Sorry, wish I had better news, chap, but uh, unlikely. Improbable at best. Very unfortunate. If you want to be a stand-up comedian today, you have to do way more than just stand-up. You gotta want it, son. You gotta really want it. This isn't a game for, for ninnies. You have to do so much more than stand-up, and that's not because you're bad at stand-up. That's the, the tricky thing. Like, people say, you know, don't quit your day job, and it's this knock implying you aren't funny. Uh, but I've, I've been doing this for a minute, and I know a crazy amount of funny people who can't make a reasonable living as a stand-up comic, and it's not because they aren't funny. You know, you can be hilarious. You can crush, you know, make room after room of random people burst into spontaneous laughter. That's hard to do. And you can still just be barely getting by doing stand-up. Uh, that sounds crazy, but there's so much more that goes into it. Some of it is basic economics, you know, supply and demand. There's, there's way more people who want to be professional stand-up comics than there are comedy shows to perform at. There's a bottleneck there. And because so many people love doing stand-up, there's tons of talented people willing to do it for almost no money. You know, it's, it's just that much fun. And if you can hire an equally funny person for less money, that drives down the cost of stand-up and everyone makes less money. So then it's harder for everyone to make a living as a comedian. So how do you increase the value of your own stand-up? That's the problem, that's the essential issue. What makes you holding a microphone and talking to people more valuable than someone else doing it? Is it laughs per minute? That's, that's one metric. You know, the industry standard is supposed to be a laugh every 15 seconds. You know, that's four laughs a minute. You're gonna be more than that for parts of your act, less than that for parts of your act, but that's the average you need to be around if you wanna do stand-up professionally. Okay, lots of people can do that, right? There's, there's a ton of people who can hit that metric. You know, supply still exceeds demand. So then, you know, quality of laughs matter too, right? Some comics are going to be able to get more intense laughs out of people. Their four laughs per minute are more enjoyable than another comic's same four laughs per minute, right? That's definitely true. There's, there's a quality difference there. Um, that is a way that you can distinguish yourself. That is a way you should strive to distinguish yourself. Some comics are more unique and interesting than others. You know, not only are they laughing, but you're also connecting with the audience more strongly using other emotions, right? There's more tones, emotional tones there. Uh, they feel more like a friend or family member. That extra connection, there's something to be said for, for creating that relatability. But still, lots of comics out there who can do that and nobody knows their name. That's the reality. Nobody is rushing to buy tickets to their shows. So what gives? Why, why, why don't people like laughing enough? Uh, isn't isn't laughing it, laughing's the best? Why why aren't people into this as much? Well, you know people do people do like laughing. They do obviously, but they can get their laughs from all sorts of other sources. They have options, and all of those other options are also frantically trying to get the attention of potential audience members. So that becomes the second job of stand-up comedy marketing. You're in competition with every other form of comedy entertainment from a marketing standpoint. You have your day job that you're not ready to quit yet, you have your art that you're working on, and you have to be your own marketing agency. You have to, ba basically you have to produce commercials for yourself. It's kind of what I'm doing right now, right? If you don't do that, you will not make it as a stand-up comedian. You can still be a stand-up comedian, right? You can do shows and make people laugh. That's pretty accessible, uh, but it's never going to be your full-time job. I would say most people who know anything about comedy these days have at least heard about Mark Marin, his podcast, WTF. You could draw a pretty direct line between him starting his podcast and just about every other comedian, including myself, starting our podcasts. I held out for a pretty long time, but I'm doing it now. Mark was talking to another stand-up comic, Sam Talent, and Mark said, you have to figure out what you want out of it 
and then you go get it, go create it. No one's ever going to give you anything, right? And by it, he means, you know, comedy, the art form, the industry. What do you want out of it? Mark's been in the entertainment industry for years. He, you know, he gets how it works. You know, there's too much supply, not enough demand. You have to go out there and create demand for your art. Your art can be great, but if you don't market it, very few people will ever appreciate it. You know, the problem is artists aren't natural marketers, right? That's one reason lots of them aren't appreciated until after they're dead, right? Somebody else eventually markets their stuff once they've kicked the bucket. What I'm trying to say is don't let Sam Talent die before you appreciate him. If you see that Sam Talent is coming to your city, buy a ticket, he's awesome, you will have a great time. He basically does like solo, long form, improv, stand-up comedy, like it's just, you just, it's pretty impressive. You should just go see him. I also want to make sure I mention that Sam wrote a book. It's called Running the Light. Uh, if you run the light in stand-up, that means you went over your time on a show. You know, they light you when you're supposed to get off stage. If you ignore the light and just keep talking like a buffoon who doesn't respect cultural norms of behavior, you know, in, in true comic fashion, you have run the light. That, that's the whole thing is a lot of comics don't respect cultural norms. It is kind of funny that like stand-up comedians will mock any and all social convention, but you dare go over your time, you mother. That's how you get a comic upset. But then some comedians go the other way with it. You know, like, I'm a comedian. I don't obey any rules. Except for when the light flashes at me, then I turn into a trained animal who finishes up his tricks and gets off stage like a good little boy. But Sam wrote this book about a fictional character named Billy Ray Schaefer, who's an older stand-up comic. His life has fallen apart a little bit. You know, I, I can't do Sam's writing any justice, so I'm not gonna try, all right? It, would, it wouldn't be good. But Sam, he's a hell of a novelist, all right? The book is, it's brilliant, all right? His, his descriptive language, the way he paints the story, the characters, I can't describe it because I do not have the same mastery of descriptive language. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful book. It's, 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 a, it's a gorgeous book. <laughs> so if you have any aspirations to be a stand-up comic, you need to read Running the Light by Sam, by, by Sam, by Sam Talent. No, by Sam Talent. Uh, you, you should, you really need to. You're dumb if you don't. It's, it's a beautiful book. But Billy Ray Schaefer uh, doesn't follow the rules. He's running the light metaphorically in life, you know, not just in stand-up. And also, if you're just a person who enjoys great stories, if you want to read a unique, distinctly American story about a rogue artist, you know, this aging renegade trying to keep it together, read the book, all right? I, know, I don't know if that sounds appealing or not coming from me, but it's, it's worth your time. It's so interesting if you're an artist, if you're a creator, it's worth your time. You really don't need to be a comic to appreciate the story. Uh, if, if there is any justice in the world, A24 will adapt that book into an independent film. I'm sure it'll be gorgeous, it'll win an Oscar. That's what should happen in a, in a just world, just saying. But uh, Sam uh, also put together an audiobook version where a bunch of other stand-up comics read different chapters of the book. That's actually how I listened to it. Uh, definitely enhanced the experience. I'm a big audiobook fan. And it was cool to hear these comics reading it, which also, brilliant marketing move, right? You have all your buddies who are stand-up comics join in on the project. Their audiences get exposed to the book that way. Smart, right? Smart, smart. Keep that in mind for the future for yourself. But uh, anyway, Sam's hilarious. He can crush in any room. He's been doing it for years. He's a gifted novelist. He has a bunch of funny friends who support him and want to see him succeed. And by the way, you've never heard of him. What's up with that, right? That's how hard it is to make it as a stand-up comic. It's also why if you're in it, you better be doing it for the love of the game because you're probably not gonna make it. <laughs> Enjoy the ride, right? Don't worry about the destination, all that stuff. It's, it's very important to have that mindset as you struggle along because chances are blah, you're gonna struggle, friend. But if you wanna make it, learn how to market yourself. Figure that out. I think about this a lot. I have a, I have a note about it on my desk Steve Wozniak invented things, right? You don't know who Steve Wozniak is. You should, but you don't. Uh, Steve Jobs marketed things, right? He sold what Steve Wozniak invented. You know who Steve Jobs is. So, if you wanna tell jokes, market yourself.
Lots of artists think that that means they're selling out. I don't think that's true anymore. You know, the internet has kind of changed the game in this way. We're all on TikTok right now. Uh, I think you can market yourself authentically by creating things online, right? The marketing can be part of the art. It's not the same art as stand-up, but it is creative, right? It plays in that same headspace. Let's, let's face it, we're living in strange times. This is all kind of a weird new experiment, uh, but it's fun. How, how do you get around the bottleneck of there being too many comedians and not enough shows? You bring the show to the people a little bit more directly. Let's face it, in a lot of ways, a comedy show isn't convenient. You gotta buy a ticket, you gotta take a night to drive somewhere, you gotta pay professional sports stadium prices for bar food. That ding dong on stage better be funny. They better be relatable, they better twist your brain around in all sorts of fun ways that you weren't expecting, right? This needs to be an experience, right? There's a risk to jump into you know, that situation blind. It, it helps to get a flavor of that person introduced to them first you know, through other means online. So now we have this weird opportunity to find fans online and convince them to be some of the butts in seats at our shows. You have to find ways to create new demand for your unique art. Challenge accepted. If you got nothing else from this episode, go follow Sam Talent on Instagram and TikTok, at Sam Talent and at Sam Talent Comedy. Uh, here's the other thing about Sam's book, Running the Light. Uh, the book feels good, all right? Like texturally, like it, I don't know. <laughs> Mm. I don't I don't know what this is made out of, but it feels good in one's hands. I read a lot of books. I'm a book nerd. Everyone, anyone who's into books is kind of a book nerd, right? This is a paperback, but not all paperbacks uh, feel the same, right? This one feels nice. If you're watching the video version of the podcast on YouTube, you know that I'm wiggling it in my hands right now, and I'm doing that because it feels it feels right. If I ever write a book, I'm gonna message Sam. You know, it's like, hey, strange question. Uh, what is your book made out of? Uh, I know it's paper, but what kind of paper? What kind of paper? What's the thickness? What's the grade? You know, is it is it is it coated with something specific? Why does it feel this way? I, I want I want to make my book out of your paper. Just turn it into like an ASMR thing. Mmm. So yeah, I'm a freak. I'm a freak for books. Uh, I have a book recommendations page on my website, anotherlazymillennial.com, anotherlazymillennial.com. Yeah, look how I snuck some marketing in on your little punk ass. You got to keep an eye on me. I'm, I'm always doing that. This could make for a decent stress ball, you know. It is like if you're fidgety, if you've got anxiety issues, just. You know, this is, just do some of this, you know? This is calming me down. So yeah, Running the Light, it's a great book, both because of the words inside it and because of how it feels in one's hands. Buy the book. I'll just read real quick. Sam has, uh, has some quotes. He says that the book is, uh, is dedicated to comedians, but only the funny ones. Hmm. Did you make the list or not? Probably not. Uh, but then he has some interesting quotes at the beginning of the book. I'll just read you these. Do you mean to tell me you could have taken your hand out of that cuff at any time? No, not any time. Only when it was funny. That's from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. For you, the day bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was a Tuesday. M. Bison, Street Fighter. <laughs> it was all right to be who he was, but others would probably think it was terrible. <laughs> Dennis Johnson, Angels. So anyway, that's um, those quotes are all relevant to uh, to what's going on in this book. And the foreword to this book, written by Kyle Kinane, another uh, very impressive uh, comedian person. Uh, if you don't know who Kyle Kinane is, I don't know. I can't really help you. You should go go Google him. Find him on TikTok. Go listen to, to Whiskey Icarus or uh, Trampoline in a Ditch. I'm just going to embarrass myself by not being able to, to name all of Kyle Kinane's albums. That's, that's how this is going to end. I'm sorry.